As planned, we will remove the hand wheel and bobbin winder. And as you can see in this shot, we have removed the hand wheel and bobbin winder. As we know from the previous video, the hook is compromised. Part of it is broken. Thank you for viewing. Enjoy. We are going to remove the balance wheel and bobbin winder unit. We will clean the parts and inspect them too. Thank you for viewing. Let's get started on the hand wheel. Well, we'll loosen this. Undo that. And here is the, the lock washer. I mean, look at the condition of this. That is really quite clean. That is too. It's, it's quite clean. This 1591 does not have a potted motor. So this 1591 had been substantially changed from the way it was manufactured. It does have a bobbin winder. For the purposes of this film, this video, this is a very good device to work on. But it does have issues. We can't get the horizontal arm shaft to rotate freely or um, without, without lagging or, or stalling. And it also came with a broken uh, hook part and the, the stud here broke. But, so the machine has been harvested for, for parts and it more than likely will never stitch accurately or properly. And I have no intention of getting it to the point where I would try and see if it would. You know, in spite of the good decals and how the parts that it came with are pretty clean, you know, because if you look at down here, that is, that's a replacement part. So it's had some love. There's, there's no two ways about that. But uh, we'll continue along and for our purposes, it's still a great machine because we're still learning from it. What I want to do is go around back and take a, a look because I'm pretty sure there's a screw back there as well. And there we can see that one screw right there. So one on the back, two on the front, on the bobbin winder itself, and then the two that anchor it to the machine. I'm going to give the machine just a little bit of oil. A drop there, there, there. It's going to come off and get cleaned anyway, but while I've got the vantage point, I'll just sop up that excess oil. And I'll let that oil sit in there for, for a little while. First I'm going to remove the bobbin, and then second I'm going to remove the tire. Now we're going to remove the screw. Apparently this is called the frame, so we're going to remove the frame. Now I know there's a, a spring or two in here from past experience, so I'm just hanging on to it while I undo this hinged screw and you can see that it's a hinged screw because the front end is is threaded but the back near the top is is unthreaded anyway when I pull this forward this spring is going to boop and I just want to catch it on oh it didn't <laughs> well what do I know but anyway there it is here's the the back look that's a little yucky from my earlier oiling and you know really take a look at it we can see already right here is a recess is a hole drilled through and that's for the back of this spring to to seat in so and the way to undo that is to to take that out but so maybe I'll just do that just undo this right now there, that's out now. And there we can see the, the spring lying in there. And there, there's that tab that goes down there in that hole. So that's a little bit oily. It's not all that dirty. It's mainly just oily from my recent oiling. The other part we have now is, is this. Yes. Here are the two screws. There's one. There's the other one right there. And those two screws keep the whole bobbin winder complex on the machine. As we maybe saw before when we took this off, these were the two screws that we undid. The other thing that I wanted to check out while we're here is that there's two screws on the the bobbin winder right there. So this is going to be my point of interest for the next little while. Okay, and it's pretty grimy. 
it's good that it's gonna get cleaned. Wow, what a surprise that was. I was putting the lock washer back on there and I'm putting this on or undoing it or what have you and look what happened. Bro, really dandy vice grips and see. You know what, I might be able to do it. I might be able to do it. Easy Jeb, easy. Relax, don't go hyper now. Well, I'll be darned. We got it out. Here are the bobbin winder parts and what I'm gonna do, there's nothing in that container with them, it's just the part. This is uh, soapy water to, first I'm going to put oil in here and oil the springs especially generously. I'm not gonna put any crud cutter in here because I think I can clean with oil and then hot soapy dishwater, dishwashing liquid water and then clear water to rinse and then the hair dryer to dry the parts so there's no flash flooding, uh, rusting, pardon me. But anyway, so that's the tools we're gonna use to get the job done. So without further ado, so I'm just gonna kind of flood that with, gotta shake it, shake it up, it says on the instructions. How are we doing here? Can you guys see me? Oh yeah, you can see me. So there's that oil hole there. These are screw holes or whatever spring holes for the spring tails. This guy is dirty in here from a, from a, you know, the rubber ring that kept on going or. So that's pretty much, that I'm gonna give a scrub to down there. That should come clean with a little bit of a scrub and that should too. Uh, the, the screws, well, they're easy to do. And actually my fingers are so messy right now that the screws, I can kind of get them oiled up just. Okay, so I got the toothbrush here. And what I did was I put 100% dishwashing soap, liquid soap on the toothbrush. And I'm just going to give this a little scrubby dub dub. Like that. And like that. And you know what, since I'm here, might as well do the whole darn thing. I absolutely want to do that. Okay, so we'll rinse it in there and the water in the soapy water to that water's gone cool. Well, that water is still nice and warm. And so, right now I'm going to do this one right now by itself. And I'm going to lay it down there. Get the hair dryer. So I think that might be good enough. Well, it is warm. It is dry. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately put a drop of oil in the, or two drops even. There's one, there's two. There, so I'm expecting that that is fine. I am going to get this. Get some oil from down there and put some oil. You know what? I'm going to put some oil right like that as well. So that's all I'm going to do with that is it got oiled, it got washed, and it got oiled. And I don't want to do too much else to that because if I do anything else, then I'll have to do something more to it to remedy what I just did. Let me see how we made out. Okay, so the wheel came pretty, pretty clean. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't think that will, yeah, that's, that's, it's really clean. There's a little speck there, but so what? It's so insignificant. So we'll just get another nice piece of shop towel since you know this is Hollywood in downtown Montreal 
That'll go like that. And then same here with the springs. I'm just going to get the oily brush. Can I put oil on this brush now? And then into the soapy water, which is now gray. And then into the rinse water, and we'll leave it there. And then we'll give these a little scrub with the oil. See, nothing's really all that dirty. It's just, you know, decades and decades of accumulated grime and, uh, you know, lack of regular maintenance. I mean, I remember, I mean, when I was a little kid in England, all the machines were, you know, probably 201s or whatever. They were all black machines then, the cast iron. I mean, hell, that was late 50s, early 60s. And onward. Okay, so that's in there. There's this other spring. So it's a pretty simple cleaning job, you know. Give it a little bit of oil and then uh, soapy water. Like I said, you know, the, the machine's really not all that filthy for being, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> for being neglected or orphaned or, you know, just uh, kind of exploited for the parts and all that. Um, but, you know, it's it's not bad too, you know. So anyway, I'm going to get these guys out of the way here. And then we're going to start up the hair dryer. Wow, first time. Now I think I have to get... This screw. And put it on there. I don't know if I've got to put another piece on here yet. Maybe it's not that one. Will that stay on? Here is the frame hinge screw. That's going to go right in there, right now. We get the frame and all that good stuff. This is called the hinge screw because it's got thread and no thread and the no thread allows this to act as a, as a hinge. 
Uh, this is called, uh, uh, what's that called? This is called the stop latch, indeed. So that's what we have left still. That spring, the uh, hinge screw, and the other two screws to hold that in place and that in place. And then we'll be good to go. This is called the frame. I couldn't remember the the name of this big black part here. That's called the frame. This is called the tripping lever. And then we have the the screw with the threads and at the top it doesn't have a a thread. And I forget what we call that, but I'll figure it out probably before the end of the video. So, just going to get this back together and It'll be good to go. There's a little hole there for the spring. And there you can see it better from this side here, right there. Right? Now, where'd the light go? There we go. You can see the blue through the small hole to the, at about 10 o'clock on the big, the big one, the big hole. So that's where we're going to put the tail of the spring down there. there yeah can we see it there can we get it focused on there See it right near my finger there. It's definitely a little harder to see on this side, but it's right there. There we go. There's a better focus there. That wheel came pretty clean, the pulley there, so I'm pleased about that. There's still, like this isn't spotlessly clean, but I mean, where's it going? Plus, it does, it does, it's not going to work anyway. So now i got to figure out where to put that little guy there. And it goes on here somehow. So we see the, the other hole for the spring right down right down there I've actually got the tip of my pointer right in the where the spring goes so when I pull that out like that I hope you can see that it's yeah you should be able to see that so that's where this other spring goes and I have to decide which way which way it goes in I don't think it matters. So I'll just put it 
Ouch. Be careful, those at the edge of those wires are sharp. Okay, it's right down there, so it's right. Did I get it in? There, I got it in now, the bottom one. So there, that goes like that. Then I'm going to get these guys and take them out of the water. That's water only, rinsing water. And they're going into the strainer. And I already have a shop towel in there. I'm just kind of drying my hand on my jeans. And I'm going to have to get a piece of shop towel because i got to turn on the hair dryer. I don't think I'd get electrocuted, but I push my luck. <laughs> you know, maybe I've already had eight and I lost count. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to find out about the ninth or tenth today. <laughs> Lives. Okay, come on Jeb. Dummy up. Get to work. You betcha. Give them a little turn over. And that's about as good as it gets. We'll serve them up right like that with the other bob and winder parts. At, uh, here at Jeb's Sewing Restoration Kitchen. So I've got this. That is called the frame, right? It is. And then I take this piece that I can't remember right now what it's called but what I'd like to draw our attention to is right up here by my thumb under my thumb right there there's a hole there and that's where this little screw goes so I'll put that there like that I'm going to pull it out of the view for a minute just to get it started because otherwise I'll be fumbling forever there in front of you. Be wasting data. So let me see if I can get that started at least. How come it is always so awkward to, to start screws, you know? So it goes there. Yuck. It fell.
There, that's on. And well, that'll go on there somehow. Well, there. <laughs> I do have it on. And uh, I'm going to stop there. That is going to have to be readjusted. We want to make sure that we understand that this is not ever going to be a working machine. This is not going to be sold. I'm going to tinker with this and uh, do some, probably do a few more videos on it uh, before I make the switch to uh, 011 484 or 494 or whatever it is whatever the other 1591 is. But the other 1591 is complete. It's a little dusty and dirty uh, from not being cleaned inside for decades, but uh, you know, the owner, he passed away decades ago and this was was, uh, was kept in a relative's home. And it wasn't in Ontario, it wasn't Ottawa or Eastern Ontario. <coughs> Excuse me. It was uh, Montreal West Island is where the nice lady uh, gave me the machine. So I'm really happy about this. I, I will do this again, what I just did here, because that's really the first time that I've done that, uh, taken it apart and put it back together. So I'm gonna do that another few times in the next day or two, just to get this done correctly. That's, that's not in the correct position, I don't think. Anyway, Thanks for watching, guys and gals, gals and guys, and uh, stay safe, have fun, and play with your machines, and uh, keep on being creative, and come on back real soon. Ciao, amigos.